our next session is still under the integumentary system, but this is the second part of the integumentary system. It comprises skin preparation for surgery and wound irrigation. But wound irrigation was also treated together with wound dressing. So we are going to look at procedure for skin preparation. Skin preparation will be discussed again in Nurse 334, that is surgery, and is part of pre-operative preparation of patients for surgery. So we are going to concentrate on the practical aspect and I'll urge you to watch the video on skin preparation under 337 surgery. Now skin preparation is the cleansing. It involves cleaning and shaving of the area for surgical operation. It is done to help reduce the risk of infection to the patient. That is the risk of infection of our surgical wounds. Skin preparation will depend on the hospital's protocol. In some hospitals, a dilapidatory cream is used in getting rid of the hair and then cleansing of the site is done afterwards. In others, shaving of the site for surgery is also done. However, when it comes to shaving, we don't shave only the site of surgery, but the area uppermost and beneath the site of surgery are all shaved. For instance, if a patient is to undergo a laparotomy, which involves a large incision of the abdominal wall, skin preparation is done from below the patient's breast, that is the chest, down to the mid thigh. In surgeries of the groin, like in herniography, skin preparation is done from below the umbilicus to mid thigh. So we want to quickly look at the practical aspect. So we are switching on to the demonstration on how skin preparation for surgery is done. Before skin preparation, patient hygiene needs is supposed to be met. That is, patient is asked to void or empty the bowel and the bladder. And then patient also takes his or her bath. So we want to do the practical demonstration for skin preparation for surgery. Thank you. We now come to the procedure for skin preparation. We need to set a trolley. And this trolley comprises sterile and then non-sterile items. So we have our sterile items in a sterile tray on top of the trolley. In it, we have a sterile towel to cover the sides of skin preparation after the procedure. We also have a sterile gallipot containing savlon or antiseptic lotion. And then we have our sterile cotton wool and gauze swabs to clean the abdomen. It's dipped in the antiseptic lotion and used in cleansing the site after the shaving or the preparation. Then we also need warm water and then we need soap. We can use gauze or sponge to wash the sites. Because the patient has taken his bath already, we use gauze to cleanse the sites before shaving. Then we also have a shaving stick or razor. Then on our bottom shelf, we have an antiseptic lotion, a soap, protective Macintosh and towel to protect the patient's bed, we need a sterile glove. We also need disposable gloves, a receiver for use swabs. Then we also have plaster to secure the sterile towel in position and avoid contaminating the site that has been prepared for the surgery. So
So we now move on to the procedure. Like all other procedures, patient's privacy is very, very important. So we need to explain the procedure. We have to provide privacy by using a screen. We can also use um, curtains, draw curtains, close doors and windows as a means of providing privacy. First of all, let's explain the procedure to our patients. Good afternoon, Mr. Mensa. I am Nurse Anson, and this morning, I hope um, Doctor and the other nurses have already informed you. You'll be taken to the theater around 10 a.m. So I'm here to prepare the site for the surgery, and this will involve shaving and then cleaning. After which, we will cover the site with another sterile or clean towel. We want to prevent dirt and contamination of the site that was cleaned and we are going to apply plaster i know it's going to be uncomfortable and cause inconveniences but i'll plead with you to bear with me after that we wear you your theater gown and then we wheel you to the theater thank you so when you are set so you wash your hands and the next step is to provide privacy and protect your patient's bed. Now my patient is undergoing a laparotomy and the incision is large and incision is going to be made on the abdominal wall. So the skin preparation is going to be done from below the breast of the patient, around the chest to the mid thigh. Patient should not be unduly exposed. Patient is exposed when you are ready for the procedure. So the bed is protected. The site is now washed with the soap and shaved. And at this point, a disposable glove is worn. So the area where the skin preparation is going to be done, during the washing, we can wash as we would have done when we are bathing the patient. By cleaning the site with antiseptic lotion, you clean a wide area once. We want to prevent spreading infection. The area is now rinsed, but it is not dried. It is rinsed so that with the drops of water, shaving is done. So we now come to the shaving. During shaving, we need a piece of gauze, or we may also need water, so that the hair that collects on the shaving stick is cleaned. Then the shaving is done systematically and is done once at a time and is not in a haphazard way. Shaving is done systematically, making sure you cover a wide area. And the shaving includes the genitalia of the patient. In male patients, the scrotum and the penis are lifted, and then the hair around that area are shaved. So from the umbilicus to the mid-thigh of the patient. 
Now, when we are done with this, we now come to the application of the sterile towel and cleansing of the site with antiseptic lotion. We are supposed to drop a sterile glove on the trolley. The hands are now washed before we wear the sterile glove. Now, in wearing the sterile glove, we have a technique. We have the right and the left glove. And wearing the right glove, you make sure you get hold of the inner sleeve because that is going to cover the hand. Making sure the finger holes are not touched to prevent contamination. So I'm holding the outer or the inner portion that will be attached to the skin. Now we come to wearing of the left glove at this point you insert the fingers in the hole or the outer portion of the other glove because this side was up and is considered contaminated all must be done on the trolley so you can now arrange because the surfaces of both gloves are now sterile. So we now clean the sides with our antiseptic lotion. Cover a wide area once, then we change. Like so. So after cleaning with the antiseptic lotion, we now dry the sides. We pick with a non-dominant hand and then the one that is going to do the cleaning. So the sides is now cleaned. And gloves are still sterile. I now cover the site with my sterile towel, making sure the towel is not contaminated. And then finally secure the site with plaster. So patient has now worn his theater gown. An identification band is placed on the wrist, bearing the name, age, type of surgery to be performed, the ward, and the diagnosis. The females, the hair is covered, and our patient is ready for his laparotomy at the theater. Thank you very much, Mr. Mensa. I finished and I wish you all the best as you go in for the surgery. So that brings us to the end of our skin preparation for surgery. Remember, we are doing this to prevent infection or post-op infection. And therefore, during skin preparation, asepsis technique or asepsis should also be utmost. We should think about ensuring proper aseptic technique. After the procedure, a trolley is discarded, our instruments, gallipots, bowls and receivers 
are decontaminated, washed, dried, and then sent for sterilization. And all other things are replaced or taken back to where they were taken from. And then the used swabs and gloves are also discarded. The next thing is documentation. Documentation is very, very important, nursing documentation. And documentation is done in the nurse's notes and then the report book as well. So the procedure is documented.